What carbs are safe on a low carb diet? I point this out because sometimes you'll hear people say things like, carbs are not necessary for health. Well, that's partly true, but it's not entirely true. If by saying carbs are not necessary for health, you mean sugars are not necessary for health, that is absolutely true. There's no need in a human for glucose, fructose, sucrose, or any other sugar. It's often been said in the dietary community that you need sugars to survive, that your brain needs sugar. That's not true. You do, your body can manufacture sugar, but you don't need to ingest dietary sugar. So that is true. But here's where it, does, it goes wrong. Uh, to understand this issue, you have to understand something about fibers. So all fibers, whether it's insoluble fiber like in bran or cellulose, or soluble fibers like the beta-glucan of oats, or prebiotic fibers of the sort you find in legumes and chickpeas and inulin. Regardless of what kind of fiber you're talking about, all fibers, speaking biochemically, are chains of sugars chains of glucose, fructose, and other sugars. People don't think of fibers as chains of sugars, but they are. Every fiber is a chain of sugar in one form or another. So what happens if you don't get the prebiotic fibers that are carbohydrates? Well, that's where weird stuff happens. So unfortunately, many people are not aware that there's a basic human need for prebiotic fibers. So what happens if you are deprived of prebiotic fibers? Because all prebiotic fibers are, come in carbohydrate vehicles, that is in plant products, such as legumes and onions and garlic. So what if you fail to get a sufficient intake of prebiotic fibers? Weird stuff happens. One of the, uh, phenom one of the things that happens is there's an overgrowth of a bacterium called acromancia, acromancia mus mucinophila. And this is because acromantia loves prebiotic fibers, as do other bacteria. But when you fail to take in a sufficient quantity of prebiotic fibers, many bacteria die or drop in numbers, while acromantia has the unique ability to, when deprived of prebiotic fibers, to feed on human mucus. It, that's why it's called acromantia mus mucinophila, mucus lover. And so acromantia blooms because it survives on the human uh, biofilm or mucus lining and overpowers other bacteria. So a healthy quantity of acromantia in the gut is acromantia constituting about 3.5 to 5% of all bacteria. A lot of people have less than that, which is not good either because they don't take in prebiotic fibers. But if you t uh, uh, are completely deprived of prebiotic fibers for an extended period, acromantia can bloom as other bacteria die off or are suppressed. And acromant when acromantia reaches about 8 to 9 percent total of the total microbiome, that's when it starts to really erode or degrade the mucus lining. And the mucus lining thins dramatically. And that invites intestinal inflammation, chain other changes in bowel flora, specifically a drop in species diversity. It increases intestinal permeability uh, and invites something called metabolic endotoxemia, which is the passage of a breakdown product of bacteria called lipopolysaccharide into the bloodstream. So having too much acromantia from not ingesting enough prebiotic fibers has real consequences for, for health. It's not just acromantia, there's actually also several other species that do this, but acromantia is kind of the defining bacterium that does this. So you need prebiotic fibers. Fibers are carbohydrates. So when we say what carbs are safe on a low carb diet, prebiotic fibers. Fibers of any sort are not metabolized to sugars by humans. No fiber is, 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 is digestible by humans. We don't have the enzymes. But prebiotic fibers are digestible by bacteria. And that's the form of carbohydrate you absolutely must get. Now for a more extended conversation about prebiotic fibers, including what foods contain how much prebiotic fiber and what foods are dangerous because of excessive net carb exposure, you'll find that in uh, many of my books, but especially my newest book, which is the uh, ex Revised and Expanded Wheat Belly, that includes my entire wheat belly program from A to Z, uh, including new recipes, new success stories, and new concepts, all in one book. I took everything from all the books and condensed it into one book, and that's the uh, Revised and Expanded version of Wheat Belly. My Wheat Belly Total Health book also has these conversations and lists of prebiotic fiber sources 
as does my Wheat Belly blog uh, and my Undoctored book and Undoctored blog. So any of those resources can help you get started on uh, doing a better job of getting prebiotic fibers into your diet, this form of carbohydrate that is fine on a low-carb diet.